This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy, peace, and abundant blessings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and welcome to worship. On this first Sunday of Advent, we invite you to pull out your Advent candle wreath and light the candle of hope today that burns brightly this first Sunday of the Advent season. We also invite you to turn to your weekly email to see how you might give to the Walltown Angel Tree and be part of our Silent Night Project, joining the virtual congregation that will lead us in worship by candlelight on Christmas Eve. As we transition from arriving here to being here, let us hear these words of our Lord through the prophet Jeremiah, who writes, The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Let us prepare our hearts for the worship of Almighty God. Today marks the beginning of the season of Advent. Advent from the Latin word adventus, which means coming. It's a time of preparation in anticipation of the coming of Christ. Each Sunday from now until Christmas, we'll be lighting one of these candles in our Advent wreath. The wreath being round testifies to the eternity of God's creation, love, and care for all people. There are four candles, one for each Sunday in Advent, and a white candle that will be lighted on Christmas Eve. The candle we light today signifies hope. We invite you now to join us from home in lighting the first purple candle on your Advent wreath as we offer these words. This is the season of holy waiting. We wait for the day when the Lord will fulfill the promise made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We watch for the day when the Son of Man will come with power and glory. We wait in the shadows for the light of the world to appear. We worship a God who breaks forth through the light of hope. In hope, let us worship God.
prepare to receive God's word proclaimed, let us ready the ground of our hearts with a prayer. Let us pray. Christ of intimacy and mystery, with blessing in your hand, you descended to earth to live among us. We praise you that you live and reign today still. As you give us your word this hour, help us to receive all that you would have us to hear. And by our hearing, may our witness be enlarged to your glory and our voices tuned all the more to that heavenly chorus that sings, Alleluia, Lord Most High. Amen. Our reading this first Sunday in Advent comes to us from the book of Mark. Jesus has just forecast the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and said that the day will surely be coming when that stone will be left on stone in the structure that had seemed so permanent, as all things seem so permanent until they aren't. Speaking to his disciples and to all of us now, listen to God's word. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when this time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep. And when he comes, suddenly, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends our reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sixteen years ago for Christmas, a church member in Charlotte gave us a small cactus, a Christmas cactus, in a little pot. It lived in our windowsill season after season. Clippings were stuck in water and given to friends to take root in their own lives. It has been transplanted several times as it has grown, and just this week, the tips of its deep green leaves have started to bud with their annual blooms. Here it is here. It sits quietly in the corner of our kitchen among the other plants the rest of the year, tended to routinely until this very moment. When a flash of pink catches our eye one morning and we remember that we are watching and that we are waiting, watching for something gloriously beautiful to blossom, waiting for an unseen promise well underway to come to its fullness and its fruition. This is Advent. It is the reminder that we are a watching, waiting people where the predictability of daily life can cause us to slumber in our spiritual attentiveness, Advent says, Keep alert! Jesus is coming. And be about the work of alert, waiting, watching people. After months of separation, my mom came to our home after we'd all quarantined for two weeks to celebrate our son's sixth birthday back in October. Though she arrives, predictably, late in the afternoon on the day of her drive up from Atlanta, the moment our son's eyes popped open that morning, he gasped, Grammy's coming! 
and raced to the window where he vowed to sit and watch for her all day long. Jesus is coming. Advent whispers in our ears, inviting us to respond with an equal portion of joy and expectation. Wake up! We hear right at the time in the twilight of this year when we're suffering from pandemic fatigue and trauma fatigue and would just as soon hunker down under the comforter for a long winter's nap until 2021. But we can't. There is too much to be done in preparation for Jesus. You don't sleep right before company comes over. You put the final touches on your readiness. Warm the food, dust the surfaces, sweep the floor, check the toilet paper situation, take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. Watch for the sign of the fig tree, Jesus says to his disciples of his final return and reign. As its branch turns tender and it puts forth its leaves, the season of its fruition is near. Wake up! Keep alert! The culmination of God's kingdom on earth is at hand. Look at yourself. Get ready and stay ready. You don't want to miss a single sign that the Lord is near. The signs pointing to the nearness of God are downright cataclysmic according to Jesus. The sun and moon are darkened. The stars fall from the sky. You're going to want to be watching for this and ready for all that comes after. I think we can all agree by common consent that our eyes are weary from straining for the presence of God amidst so many cataclysms this year. Some may say that all of the collective calamity that has befallen us is a sign of the cosmic end that Jesus foretells, and that may well be the case. Whether or not it is, the take-home lesson for us today doesn't change. Keep awake for signs of God's presence this season. Get ready to receive Jesus in all the ways that he comes to you, through all the people and experiences and reflections and prayers and creation and silence where he comes to you and stay ready to receive him. Be who you are as watching, waiting people, and don't let pandemic fatigue or trauma fatigue translate to spiritual fatigue. You don't want to miss a single sign that the Lord is near. And while you are about the work of making preparation, Take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. Because you are one of those signs. Don't think yourself too small to manifest the glory of God. Don't think yourself too broken or too unworthy or too worthless or too weak to incarnate our risen reigning Messiah. Don't think your sphere of influence too limited or too impoverished to make a difference. Because God has always used raw materials such as this to enact signs of God's presence in the world and to make Jesus known. If God can use a crust of bread and sip of juice, a splash of water upon the brow to make a sacrament, a material manifestation of God's grace and means of communicating God's grace, then God can surely use you and God is using you to say to a weary world, look, I, the Lord, am near. Look. 
In the face of my disciple, see my smile. Look, in the life of my witness, see my work. Look, in the hands of my caring people, notice my fingerprints on your life. Look, in the midst of cataclysm, when it feels as though all that seemed permanent and fixed in the world is coming to the end, Emmanuel, I am right here. Might you, this Advent, receive in a fresh way God's presence with you and God's deep love for you? Might you, this Advent, believe in a fresh way that you are a sacrament, a physical sign and means of sharing the grace of God's presence and love with the world? I believe you can. I believe we can. Let us not grow weary of watching and waiting for the ever deeper recognition of this truth. But open our hearts now, wake to greet each new day joyously now, stand on the tips of our toes now, like a child who rushes to the window to wait for Grammy. Let us watch attentively for the signs that bring the closeness of God into view like a bud on the tree holding the promise of blooms. Let our lives signal to the world right now that the Lord is near. Amen. Creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light. O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call. When this old world drew on toward night, you came but not in splendor bright, not as a monarch but the child of Mary, blameless mother mild. At your great name, O oh Jesus, now, all knees must bend, all hearts must bow, all things on earth with one accord, like those in heaven shall call you Lord. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. Praise, honor, might, and glory be from age to age eternally. Amen. Friends, this Advent season we remember that we wait not only for our own deliverance, but for the deliverance of the entire human family and for all of creation. So with one hand, linking arms with our sick and sorrowful world, and with our other hand, reaching out to Christ for healing and salvation, let us pray. Coming God, you shake the heavens and the earth, with your ferocious mercy. Console, console all those who enter into the month of December with dread. Blow your spirit of life into the lungs of all who struggle to breathe. Raise up those laid low by COVID or physical distress or mental illness. Breathe freedom and life into every human body crushed by white supremacy and oppression. Comfort all who feel the sting of absence, who are heavy laden with grief, loneliness, and sadness. 
Let your tender mercy shine upon them and upon us. Deliver us from our numbing distractions and our anesthetizing activity. Keep us awake, watching for you. Help us to abide with our wounds that we might look for your touch in our pain. Reveal in our longing your healing, hopeful presence, bearing the promise that all shall be well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every desperate heart, you look upon the weary crowds with compassion. Give energy and endurance to workers for whom this December means long hours, demanding customers and risk of exposure. Sanctify us, your church, to take up ways of gift-giving and blessing that resist idolatry and exploitation. Slow us down to listen to aching hearts and to linger with bruised bodies. And so draw us into your economy of abundant grace. For in Christ we claim we have more than enough. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you declare that the wilderness and the dry land shall be made glad. Cultivate your hope within us. Weed out the thorn bushes of complacency, greed, and distrust that wage war against our souls. Give us courage to reckon with the deep brokenness around us and within us. Save us from the easy answers and the prideful confidence that keep us from prayer. In this season of patient waiting, incline our hearts to practice your presence. Keep us awake, leaning forward toward your kingdom. Make us people of hope who sow seeds of freedom, water sprouts of redemption, lay foundations of reconciliation, and provide yeast for growth. Shape us and send us to be prophets of a future not our own. Make us people of hope who look forward to the day when our faith turns to sight when these present sufferings give way to the glory you are preparing for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve us in your faithfulness, holy God, and do not forsake us. For we pray in the name of Christ, who was delivered up for our sins and rose again for our justification, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. We pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, go forth this day in hope and enjoy to love and serve the Lord in all that you do, and to signal that the Lord is near and abide always in God's peace. Remember, we did not leave the church. We went forth to be the church. So as you do so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.